Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today I'm talking about the biggest mistake that I see that gets made in improvisation. I get a lot of videos from people saying, Amy, check me out, or Amy, listen to me improvise, or can you give me advice about my playing? The biggest mistake that I notice is this. I'm gonna to try to recreate it for you right now. So when I hear somebody play for me, I assume that their solo is starting at the beginning. But what you just heard me do kind of sounds like a second chorus or the end of the first chorus or something. There's no beginning. There's no space. It's just a lot of showing off. And I kind of get that. Like maybe if you're, if you just got one shot to show somebody what you can do, you, you want to show them what you can do and you might play, you want, might want to play scales and arpeggios and licks and runs and all the things that make you seem like a really strong player. But to me, when I hear anybody play any time, almost any time, uh, I want to hear a beginning, I want to hear a middle and I want to hear an end. It's a story. Your improvisation is a story. So how do you go about that? Well, the first step is to play a small idea and then to leave some space. My favorite solos are built that way. doesn't matter what your small idea is. Ideally, if, if you can hear the, the chord progression ending, you know, the, the melody is getting to, toward the end and, and here comes your solo at, back at the top of the form. Ideally, you, you, you hear something that you want to start with and then you start with it. But sometimes it can be hard to do that. And I actually have a video um, called Point and Sing my favorite practice method that can help you get better at actually playing what you hear. But you can even, like this song that I'm using is just friends and the first chord is C major and I know that any white note sounds good over C major. So I can just pick a couple of notes, maybe three or four notes to play. And, and then I just listen. Let me show you. So it didn't really matter which notes I played, as long as it was some idea. But then what you've got to do after you play those notes, after you commit to, you know, three or four notes or five notes or whatever, you have to listen to what you just played. And that involves taking a little break. So a little bit of space has to be left after the first thing you do. And in that space, something really cool can happen. A, a few things. First, you're going to reflect on what you've just played. Like you'll, you'll hear it. It's there. But the next thing you have to do is search for the next thing to play. And I don't want to get like all like crazy mystical on you or anything. Uh, but I, I like to think of ideas as just, especially musical ideas, as existing already, like they're just floating around out there. And if you can take a second to listen to what might come next, you can just kind of grab it and then hopefully be able to duplicate it. That's the, that's the struggle really. But, but the moments where you can actually grab the idea that's supposed to come next and then play it, that's the moment when your soul comes alive and you know, I don't know where you're grabbing it from. Maybe it's, maybe it's your own brain. Maybe it's your heart. Maybe it's the universe. Um, but 
wherever it is, I like to think of the, ne- the thing that comes next or the, the thing that you're trying to hear as being the true thing. So like the thing that makes the most sense and, and it's honest and, and beautiful. Like, well, didn't John Keats say, truth is beauty and beauty is truth and that's all I know or that's all we know? It makes sense. Like for you, the truest kind of idea that can come after the first idea might be the most beautiful. And beautiful is a subjective word, but I don't mean, you know, like, like beautiful. I mean true. So it might be angsty, it might be edgy, it could be an angular kind of phrase. But if it's true for you in that moment, that's your improv and that's money. Like that's, that's where it's at. Check out how I take that little motif that I played. I listen to it. I try to grab what comes next and, and then I go with it. And usually after I find what comes next, I wait again to, to hear what, what's out there for me to play next. And as you, as you progress through your beginning, you know, ideas will start to flow and, and be more continuous with less space. And that's good. So as you build, you know, your ideas can, can come faster and you don't have to leave space. You can, but, but the idea is to kind of leave space at the beginning. And then as you go, you know, you leave less space and then you find a nice tidy way to just wrap it up. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to take two choruses on just friends and make a nice story for you so that you can hear how I try to play what's true to me in the moment. And I don't worry about showing you what I can do. I mean, if I go, if I come at it and I know I've got two choruses to go, I've got a long time to show you what I can do, but I'd rather us all not think about it, like showing people what we can do, but rather, just like I said, looking for what's true and what's beautiful and being honest about the way that you execute it. So I'll give it a shot and hopefully, uh, as my grandfather says, put my money where my mouth is. can have the confidence to leave space and to listen. It's not easy to do. It takes practice. It takes maturity. Sometimes it takes some time to, you know, make yourself that kind of a player. But I do know that it's a very important step to be able to gain the confidence to play what is true to you. So good luck in that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to press subscribe and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.